Long before the evolution of horned dinosaurs like the famous Triceratops, there was Shringosaurus indicus. This unusual reptile looked vaguely like a large, muscular, long-necked lizard with two horns upon its head. While not a dinosaur itself, it is the closest evolution has come to the low-budget Slurposaurs in old dinosaur movies. Shringosaurus is a relatively new discovery. First discovered in 2017, all known Shringosaurus fossils come from a single bone bed in the Indian Denwa Formation. It contains the fossils of at least seven different Shringosaurus individuals. Given how many skeletons of various ages were found together, along with the lack of fossils of other species, it seems likely that Shringosaurus lived in herds. While it has not yet been dated, the fauna present elsewhere in the Denwa Formation correlates with the Anician Age of the Middle Triassic, between roughly 247 and 242 million years ago. By this point, life had still not fully recovered from the Permian mass extinction. Not all of the gaps left by the catastrophe had been filled, and the initial diversification of the dinosaurs was still 10 to 15 million years away. Even though Shringosaurus wasn't a dinosaur, it was part of the same group of reptiles as them, Archosauromorpha. This is the same clade that includes the flying pterosaurs, modern crocodilians, and a number of other extinct species that were widespread during the Triassic period. Shringosaurus was an early member of Archosauromorpha and lacked many of the traits of the more advanced archosaurs, like their fully erect limbs. Instead, it belonged to a clade within Archosauromorpha called Allocotosauria. Like Shringosaurus, most Allocotosaurus also looked superficially like lizards. The closest relative of Shringosaurus was Azendosaurus. While similar to Shringosaurus in appearance, Azendosaurus was slightly smaller, not as powerfully built, and lacked Shringosaurus's iconic horns. Earlier Shringosaurus reconstructions, including some used in this video, were based on Azendosaurus's skeleton. It is now known that Shringosaurus had a much stockier build and thicker neck than Azendosaurus. With this heavily built body and a length of 3 to 4 meters, Shringosaurus was larger than any other known Allocotosaur. Since its teeth were leaf shaped, there is little doubt that Shringosaurus was a herbivore. No other herbivorous archosauromorphs are known to have attained such a large size until the late Triassic, with the only comparably sized middle Triassic herbivores being distant relatives of mammals called Dicynodonts. As the Triassic period progressed, Dicynodonts became rarer, and archosauromorphs took their place as the dominant large herbivores. However, Shringosaurus's success seems to have come from it finding a way to simply avoid competing with the contemporary Dicynodonts. The key was Shringosaurus's neck, which was long enough for it to access foliage and tree branches unavailable to them. Indeed, Shringosaurus may have been one of the first high browsers, specializing in foraging from the tops of trees. Therefore, while its horns may make it more reminiscent of Ceratopsians, early sauropodomorphs, nicknamed prosauropods, may be a better analogs for how Shringosaurus lived. This means that despite looking more like a fat, oversized lizard, Shringosaurus convergently evolved features similar to two very different groups of dinosaurs. Of course, Shringosaurus' horns were its most striking feature, which is why its name means Indian Horned Lizard. Attached to the top of its head, they pointed upward and curved forward over most of its short skull. These horns resembled those of the theropod Carnotaurus, more than the brow horns of Triceratops. However, they more closely resemble the horns of some other Ceratopsians like Ojoceratops, and some members of an obscure branch of Ceratopsia called Nasudoceratopsini. Shringosaurus' horns have a rough texture, which usually indicates the presence of a keratinous covering. Therefore, like the Ceratopsians, Shringosaurus' horns were probably longer in life. Intriguingly, the horns are not present in two of the specimens, despite the part of the skull which would have held them being undamaged. This means that not all Shringosaurus individuals had their namesake feature. Additionally, the horns of younger individuals are proportionally smaller than those of adults. The shape of the horns is also variable among the larger horned individuals. All of these traits are typical of traits under sexual selection, suggesting that Shringosaurus' horns were probably restricted to one sex, most likely males. Although such sexual dimorphism isn't unusual among modern horned mammals, both sexes of Ceratopsians had their iconic horns and frills. While the fact that only two of the seven Shringosaurus skeletons didn't have any horns may suggest males were unusually common, this is likely the result of preservation bias. 
The skulls with horns are more robust, and would have been more likely to survive the elements long enough to have been fossilized. However, the presence of multiple males at the site suggests Shringosaurus lived in mixed-sex herds, as opposed to the harems seen in some mammalian species. Comparisons with modern animals found Shringosaurus' horns were less like those used for just display, and more like those used in active combat. This means that male Shringosaurus likely engaged in ritualistic duels with each other to impress potential mates. While the horns could also have been used in defense against predators, since females apparently didn't have them, this implies defense was at best a secondary function. Another group of Triassic archosauromorphs, the poorly known protopycnosians, also seem to have engaged in similar behavior. The difference is, they used pachycephalosaur-like domes instead of horns. This would have been very energy-intensive behavior, which is why it is rare among cold-blooded reptiles. Evidence for an elevated metabolism has been found in Shringosaurus's close relative, Azendosaurus. Although such early archosauromorphs only showed the first signs of a high metabolism, this eventually culminated in the fully endothermic dinosaurs. Regular interspecies combat may explain some of the differences between Shringosaurus and Azendosaurus, such as its greater size and more robust build. Larger and more muscular males would have had better chances in their duels, leading to those traits being selected for. In the short term, this selection for greater body size may have helped Shringosaurus become a better high browser by increasing its body size and therefore its reach. However, it may also be why it was later replaced by later archosaurs. Shringosaurus's neck was shorter than those of Azendosaurus and other closely related Allocotosaurus, apparently to support its horns and greater muscle mass. Therefore, it couldn't easily evolve a longer neck to reach more leaves. The very same evolutionary pressure that may have enabled Tringosaurus to become a successful high browser may have restricted its ability to evolve further in that direction. This was not a problem for the archosaurs, who replaced Tringosaurus. These were the sauropodomorph dinosaurs and the shuvasaurids, who despite their dinosaur-like appearance were actually more closely related to crocodilians. These later archosaurs also had a height advantage due to their fully erect limbs, whereas Tringosaurus's legs were held in a semi-sprawling stance. This was a common story during the Triassic period. The Permian mass extinction just a few million years earlier had created numerous vacant niches, meaning animals that were merely good enough at a role like Shringosaurus were able to evolve and last a long time before their eventual replacement by a species with less evolutionary constraints. Still, while it may not have been an optimal high browser, Shringosaurus was certainly an impressive addition to the Tree of Life. Thank you for watching. And a thank you to the Matalorian for narrating this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe if you'd like to see more.